nearly perfect. There was a small mistake in there, but I doubt you heard it. <laughs> Welcome back. My name's Mark. This is 2000 Hours of Banjo. And today I have a confession. All right, so I'm not gonna do much playing on the banjo today. First of all, my, my hands are just achy, achy sore. I've been doing a lot of splitting of wood. If I can get it, I'll, I'll throw a picture of all the wood I've been working on splitting of late. And my hands are just super achy and filled with probably lactic acid and they don't move that well. Hence the mistake, that's what I'm blaming. <laughs> that's what I used to excuse the mistake I made in. Uh, Man of Constant Sorrow, by the way, was the song that I played at the beginning of this video. The confession is, well, before I get to the confession, let me go ahead and give you a little bit of backstory. Yes, I practice every day that I can, which is most days. Yes, I had an injury that took me out for about three and a half months, and occasionally when things get very, very busy, I may have to skip a day. That said, in addition to practicing, I also take lessons. I have a very good instructor by the name of Mike. In fact, I link his website in the description of my videos very often. Actually, I try to get them into all of them, but sometimes I forget. And he is great. I am super fortunate that I have found Mike to work with. He's extraordinarily positive. He's very energetic and enthusiastic. He, he is very interested in my progress. He knows how to push just enough, but not too much. And it's really great. I love the relationship that I have with Mike which begs the question, why do I lie to him? <laughs> I found myself in recent uh, uh, sessions, instruction sessions, lying to him and I don't know why. So let me go ahead and back up again a little bit more. Mike likes to preach that he doesn't necessarily teach how to play the instrument, he teaches you how to practice. And he does this by assigning you homework drills uh, and how to build your own drills and your own loops and so forth. And there are two drills in particular that I tend to lie about. The first drill is, a, is the speed drills. Now, uh, he, he, he wants me to work on building speed and there's a lot of benefit to that. Um, you, you build accuracy, you build dexterity in your hand. And even if you don't want to play fast, which I, I, I really don't like the idea of playing fast. I may have an unpopular decision, but once you build up enough speed and you're playing very, very fast on the banjo, to me, to my ears, it, it kind of becomes eh, abrasive noise rather than music. So I like to play a little bit slower. That said, having good speed skills helps you play slower, more cleanly. So there's a lot of value to <clears throat> being able to play fast, even if you don't want to play fast. The second is tone. I tend to play on my strings light. I don't put a lot of power into them. And because of that, and because I'm still working on hitting every string with equal amounts of power when I don't, which is often, um, the significance of the variation and power I'm applying to the, each string is very, very noticeable because I'm not starting out with a lot of power to begin with. And he wants me to build up power. The more power I can build up in playing, hitting my strings, the, the variation between strings, the application of power to the strings is less noticeable. So again, there is a huge amount of value to learning to hit those strings with good power. Now the problem is, is the drills that he assigns me to do those, I don't like so much for various reasons. The speed drill because, well, in essence, I feel that uh, just by practicing, I am getting faster uh, at, a, at a slow rate, but I'm getting faster without necessarily doing the speed drill. So I don't know if I necessarily think they're a valuable drill, although I know that they are, I'm trying to find excuses why I don't do them. The second is with tone, and with tone, I know exactly why I don't hit or play with a lot of power, and that's because I'm typically playing at home and not in my wife's party barn, and she's usually working at home, and I don't want to be obnoxious 
Um, what's that saying that uh, Mark Twain used to <laughs> did? Uh, I think he's attributed to this quote where he says, a true gentleman knows how to play the banjo and doesn't. Anyway, she's working. I don't want to be wailing on my banjo while she's trying to work. So I don't practice with a lot of power in the strings for that reason. Yet, when I have a practice session with, uh, with Mike and he asked me, are you still doing the speed drills and the tone drills? I lie and I say, yeah, <laughs> I, I am. Mike, I'm not. I'm not doing them. Certainly not as much as I've been portraying myself doing those drills. So I, I thought light of it for quite some time, but of late I'm thinking, you know what? These are not little white lies, and there's a good reason behind that. I, Mike is very interested in my progress. He is assigning me drills, and I am telling him I am doing them. And if he doesn't see progress in the area that that drill covers, he's going to think something is wrong and he may try to adjust the drill or adapt or accommodate when there's no reason to. There's no reason to because the answer to the question of why I'm not progressing with that drill is I'm not doing the drill as frequently as I should or I'm not doing the drill at all. I'm just not telling you that. And really what I need to be doing is telling him that I'm not doing the drill and why I'm not doing the drill so we can figure out a workaround. Either use a banjo mute or stuff a rag behind the banjo to mute the sound so I can play with power without creating a lot of sound. Or with the speed drill, just figure out a reason or an explanation, some logical understanding of why it's important, why I need to do it to get me interested in doing it more. So that is the approach that we should be taking, and that approach is completely circumvented by what I have been considering a white lie, and I'm finding out it's not necessarily just a white lie. There's another reason, too, when it comes to the pocketbook, right? I'm paying my instructor. I am paying Mike to instruct me to progress so I can get better at this instrument. So what am I doing when I'm lying to him? I'm throwing money away. Why, why would I want to do that? Especially in today's economy, I don't want to throw money away. I want to get as much bang for a buck from my instruction sections with, sessions with Mike as possible. And lying disrupts that. It throws money away. It's, a, it's not just a waste of money. It's a waste of time, his and mine. So from the bottom of my heart, Mike, I apologize. Moving forward, I will be telling you the truth that no, I have not been doing my speed drills as much as I should, and I have not been playing super loud, power to the strings, as much as I say I have been, and that has been why. So hopefully we can move past this, we can get me on the right track, and if you've suffered this issue, and if you've lied with your instructor, put it in the comments. I would like to hear that I'm not alone in this. If I am, fine, I'm alone. But I think with a lot of things, maybe I'm not. Anyway, I've got some catching up to do on some drills that I've been avoiding. I'll catch you next time. Bye.